Welcome everyone to Auction House Live. This is our 429 stream of Bring a Trailer Auctions. We're going to hop right into um, our screen share in a minute here. I um, just want to wish you guys the best and hope you all had a great weekend. Um, we're going to be starting today's stream with an 8K mile AP2 Honda S2000 from 2005. Let's hop right in. This this listing only has less than seven minutes to go, 8,500 miles. Um, as you all know, AP2 versus AP1, um, revised front and rear fascias, chassis stiffening, carbon fiber synchronizers in the transmission, um, displacement upped from two liters to 2.2 liters, less revs, um, but more power. This one um, is, is like a previous car that we um, commented on um, in Suzuka blue over a blue leather interior. Um, this one is out of Colorado from a private party. <clears throat> it looks like she's looking pretty pretty good. Really nice. Um, oh my being only 8,500 miles. I think this spec is kind of a love or hate. What do you think? Yeah, the blue on blue. The Suzuka blue specifically, it being kind of like a lighter, lighter almost yeah, right. grayish blue over blue. Um, I think a lot of guys really love this, but some guys are, some guys are impartial and some guys don't like it at all. I'm kind of on the fence about it. If it had a black interior, I might be for it. Um, for me, I I kind of like either a dark blue or like a really light. Uh, striking Mexico blue. Um, I don't know how I feel about the in-between. Yeah, here. it's like a... It almost looks like somewhat of a chick's color. Like, I just keep thinking of TJ Hunt's uh, His Girl's S2K, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a little bit feminine. Not that we like to gender yeah, no. genderize anything. No, that's here. just my personal opinion. Yeah, personal opinion. opinion. Um, but but it also has 8,500 miles on it, or yeah. 8,000 miles. So I think I might be able to... To cope with that. Cope with that a uh, little bit. Another way to, um, for those really uh, astute viewers, some of the, another way to uh, tell the difference between AP1 and AP2 is right here. AP1 has more uh, of a round exhaust tip. AP2 has the ovals. Um, the, front, the rear bumper is re revised a little bit. Um, kind of cool that the um, roll bar supports here are, are done up in, in a darker blue. I really like that. Um, this has a 17 inch AP2 wheels. It almost looks like he might have spacers on it. The um, you think it, they they really align well with the uh, the body panels. Unfortunately, front bumper is drilled. Kyle and I were saying so, in a yeah. previous episode that um, we really look for cars with clean front bumpers, and that's really an add on for us. Um, but this one is drilled. Um, Depends where you're from, where, where, you're, where at you're at from. too. You know, photos aren't aren't the best, um, but private seller we're going to look at his profile in a little bit if i were if i were to guess i would say this is probably his first listing on um, bring a trailer yeah wow it looks like he's shaking the <sighs> camera a bit there yeah these 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 pictures are a little bit more clear it looks like he got it on the lift at a shop it's interesting i'm not sure maybe there's some underbody fo uh, photos to follow but I'm not sure why he just get it on the lift <laughs> um there's that blue on blue go back Got a couple, little bit of rash on the wheels, maybe. A little bit of rash on the yeah, on the driver's side um, rear wheel. It's a good, good mention. Um, but also in the previous episode when we were covering an AP2, Kyle and I were really um, we've had an AP2S2000 as well. Ours had a few more miles than this one, but um, what we really like about it is just how driver focused this car is. Um, you have the start button on the left side in red. All your radio and climate controls are just faced towards the driver. You have a large tack right in front of you. Really nice steering wheel and shifter, and just uh, really cool, um, uh, really um, nicely done. Just a great experience. Pedals. Yeah, just like, driver focused, yeah. great car. Um, what does he have on in the center of the. Oh no, those are the wheel steering wheel buttons. Yeah, those are the steering wheel just, buttons. It looks like maybe cruise control. Taking the pics with the wheel um, sideways. Looks like he's got some white shades there. I can totally see this guy. Some sender I, shades. I, I hope he has blonde hair and a visor. And with yep. those white shades, I could just envision this guy. Um, for those of you who are not too familiar with S2000s, uh, the silver panel here, it's just a plastic panel. You push that forward and the radio is right behind it. Really not a lot of room in this, in this cockpit. You could see... Um, 
little net uh, little netting on, on on both sides of the tunnel for for uh, maybe a wallet or or keys or something small but these are just kind of classic roads they're just meant to be driven um reliability of these is is incredible um it's a cool wheel yeah really really cool wheel this our, our, I've ours, not seen that. I've ours, seen that this wheel. must be 2005 and on or maybe it's a it's a different wheel altogether but ours definitely did not have that you'd see the digital gauge pod um with the tax set all the way up to eight thousand. um vtech comes on at about six vtech just kicked in yo <laughs> that's what the kids say right yeah um but this just looks like a super clean example. I mean, 8,500 miles. The one we covered previously came with the hard top. I think that had 57,000 miles. That sold for 25.2. Yep. This one, no hard top, same exact spec. Wow. It, it looks brand new. I mean, I'm not sure how Here's you only drive a 2005 S2000 for 8,500 miles. Um, I'm not entirely sure yeah, what, what is... that is in plastic. Maybe a tonneau cover or something to cover up the top. Clean Carfax. Is this a one owner vehicle? Two owner vehicle. Let's see when the second owner acquired it in 16, with only 4,000 miles. I'd be really curious to find out what he paid for it. No underbody photos. This one's out of Denver. I don't think underbody photos are needed. Just a little uh, interesting that the um, seller would have the car on a lift and not provide underbody photos. We have a high bid right now of 26000 bucks. I am uh, seeing in the comments, looks like we've got the OG tires on there, 14-year-old tires. Yep. So whoever ends up with this baby, I would budget for a nice set of tires. Yeah, maybe some Michelin PS4s. Um, if you don't want to spend as much money, hand-cooked Ventus V12s are really, really nice. We have 26 se seconds le left in this auction. High bid of 26000 I think this is going to get bid up into the 30s, but I could be wrong. Um, considering that 52000 or 57000 mile AP2 sold for twenty-five two. Granted, it had the matching hard top. We have eight seconds left on the clock. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, so oh, oh, 26, 26. 26. Sold. Wow. I would say that's a really, really great deal. I'd say, I mean, I think that's fair. Like, just I think it's well. I mean, the co the color, the dark so, blue so, one. So, so, so it's not the best spec. It's a bit of a polarizing spec. But at the end of the day, this is an eight thousand mile AP two S two thousand. It's the second year of the AP two. Um, so, I. Yeah, it looks like uh, this is his first time I, I, selling on Bring a Trailer. He said he didn't realize how important. Uh, Great photos were thinking yeah. that the car with eight thousand so miles. So I, I think I think a better photo shoot would have um, allowed him to you know maybe get into the better 30s. photo shoot. Uh, fix the curb rash. Fix the curb rash. Maybe just wheel refinishing. Yep. Underbody photos. And More maybe, of them. There were some. Okay, there were a couple, and then um, either than that, like we said, it's a bit of a polarizing spec, but this car I think in a in a uh, Sebring. I think it's Sebring Silver, it might be the color, or Silverstone um, Gray, or um, kind of a more mainstream. Suzuka SUV. Blue? This is oh. Suzuka Blue. Oh, you're talking about, oh, Yeah, okay. I'm talking about if it was in another color, possibly with a red interior. I know might have the S2000 uh... community loves that. It might have done a little bit better. But I would say I would be thrilled if I had just bought a tw an 8,000 mile AP2 for 20, Drive that for thing 26. for, for 22,000 miles and you're probably right make money on it yeah oh yeah with the trends that these um these s2000s are following i have no doubt about that but we're that that concludes our s2000 auction we're gonna um hop into a 991.2 turbo s um a really really cool car vroom vroom that's probably pretty fast eight minutes to go these this is one of this is probably my favorite spec exactly how i would spec my turbo s chalk exterior with a red leather interior um it's a bordeaux red and black interior i think the two tones really really nice um this one has carbon ceramics those come as standard on the turbo s center lock wheels um it has the updated point two front fascia um you can see there the ducks done in kind of a satin black it looks like it has carbon fiber mirrors um and this one is out of 
Port Washington, New York, with only 7,000 miles. Looks like the bumper hood and fenders are clear coat protected. With some probably Expel or um, 3M kind of material. Yep. Um, this is a twin turbo 3.8 flat six. We're talking 580 horsepower, 516 pound feet of torque to all four wheels. I think zero to 60s are at between 2.5 and 2.7 based on launch control. Can you tell me the MSRP right there? 210 thousand dollars so unlike the gt cars i think these turbos and turbo s's see a little bit of depreciation we're seeing the gt cars gt3 gt3 rs and the gt2 rs um getting above msrp i don't think we're gonna get above 200 here um current bid is sitting at 170 i still think we're low with 7,000 miles um i'm not too familiar with the market for 991.2 turbo s's but I, i would say we're low this is a private party. Really, really nice that it has CPO warranty that will transfer to the new buyer. And that CPO is good through 2024. Um, like I said, exterior is done in chalk. It's almost like a Nardo grayish color, um, kind of like a primer-ish. Um, it's a super trendy color. Um, and Damn, we've got, some, we've got some drama in this comments. We've got some drama in the comments. Kyle's looking into that. Uh, like I said, this is center lock wheels. They're 20 inch, 245 up front, 305 in the back, and they wear um, Pirelli P zeros. The yellow calibers signify that this does have carbon ceramic brakes, red or steel, um, uh, two tone Bordeaux uh, leather. Um, looks yes. really really nice. So it, so give me what, what are they talking about just, in the comments? It looks like there's some member on here talking about. Uh, like new new Porsches versus old Porsches. Mm-hmm. We've got some guy bragging about the amount of car he's got twenty plus Porsche, uh, twenty plus uh, car Porsche collection that he says it's his appreciating asset collection. Um, so is it is it not so much about this car, but no, just between commenters? Yeah, about that, that's who, just what. So like they're giving another guy a hard time about a car that he's previously bought and bring a trailer. Not this seller, another another guy. In yeah, the just chat. other guys in. in this is what bothers me when uh, we're told that we might be distracting, distracting from from the auction. Is these guys are getting into I'm a just, petty argument? I'm, I'm trying to get yeah, I'm trying to get some information about the car, and there's full paragraphs about guys arguing old Porsches versus new Porsches about their personal about oh this guy has 20 cars but he's financed them like this is just unnecessary uh, unnecessary stuff right here like just flooding the comment section so. Yeah, they're talking about red interiors on, and how that makes a car so much better than another car. It's like, yeah, see, the seller even said, so you bought a car with a red interior, sold it because it had a red interior. That makes sense. You choose to crap on my asset. Also makes sense. I typically love the open form of BAT. I become more educated on a variety of marks and models, but this isn't helpful to anyone. And so that's what we like to do on Auction House Live. We like to keep it super unbiased, and we just like to talk about the car at hand. Yep. And we evaluate its condition. We talk a little bit about the seller and his or her history, um, and we try to get the overall consensus in the comments. But I think a lot, um, not to stereotype any kind of collectors or buyers, but specifically with the Porsche and Ferrari guys, yep. there seem to be a lot of egos on the table. Yeah, and that's it what seems it like, like there's here. a lot of condescending comments about collections, and it's like guys, and and whether or not a car <clears throat> is is more or less valuable with a red interior, it's like at the end of the day, guys, these are cars. This is our hobby. This is our passion. Let's just enjoy the cars, take them for what they are, and drive the shit out of them. Um, But right now I'm going to go through the gallery um, as Kyle kind of scans those comments. You can see here, this is finished in the chalk exterior, one of my favorite Porsche colors. Um, I'm curious to see how this color ages. Um, I know this is kind of a new color from the Volkswagen Audi group, the chalk, the Nardo Grey, um, and Lamborghini has a a Grigio color um, that is similar. So I'm super excited to see how how this color kind of ages in the next 10 to 20 years. Um, How do you think these cars are going to age? So Turbo S's um, and, and all these modern day Porsches with all the technology, I think the, the tech inside them is going to become outdated and kind of uh, because there's the, unlike phones, you can't really perform a software update and software ages really quickly. But I think in terms of performance, as long as they remain reliable 
and parts remain available, I yeah. think they're going to age incredibly well. I think um, in five to ten years down the line, a lower mile, well kept nine nine one point two Turbo S would be an excellent pickup for a daily. Yeah, you know, I think these cars, in terms of a daily driver, in terms of an all weather supercar, I think they are the absolute best at it. Um, not entirely sure why this guy has temp plates on it. Um, looks like he has a really beautiful house um, in New York. Looks like an incredibly clean car. Yeah, that's interesting. I, 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 the chrome. I might want now. I might want to assume that the uh, front license plate mounts from underneath because here we have a completely clean bumper, no drills, and then if you look in pick fourteen. Oh yeah. There's pick fifteen. Pick fifteen. I mean, so excuse me. There's that front plate. So what? I think these might have been when he first acquired the car. He took these. I really uh, don't like huh. when sellers do this. I think you should upload a continuous. Uh, 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 photos from one day that were continuous, c shot continuously, yep. not pics from when you first took delivery, pics you have in your gallery from six or eight months ago. So it looks like yeah, this is this right is when he, he first took, it, took yeah. delivery, right? He might have been haggled or hassled because he didn't have his front plate by local police. I'm not sure. I'm just uh, insinuating here. And then this is the car with you know modern inspection, his plate that he added. Um, it's kind of kind of hurts me right right here a little bit yeah. considering that you drilled drilled that the, bumper the front bumper of a uh i worked at i worked at hundred dollar I, I drilled the front bumper by accident once yeah that kyle, was, uh, kyle worked at a um, herb chambers uh porsche of boston fuck you herb chambers you suck <laughs> everybody hates herb chambers in the northeast He's but he is the biggest he's all about volume doesn't give a shit about quality but yeah i uh second or third week on the job I read there was two identical dark blue Boxsters. Seven one eights, right? Yep. And I uh, happened to not read the last eight of the VIN and instead the first eight. Yep. And I was like, oh, this must be it. Drilled right into the bumper and the sales guy actually had a potential uh, customer coming in that weekend from New Hampshire, Vermont because the front bumper wasn't drilled. Wow. And I drilled right into that sucker. Oh, so. looks like we only have, what, seven seconds to go? Three, two. Three. I don't think this is meeting reserve unfortunately so oh, wow 170 ski bum 92 ski bum 92 wow. that's unexpected 7500 miles so that I think dude, that's a bit of a depreciation that hit dude for took 40 40 miles. grand was it 210 new 210 new so i wonder 40 uh and he's it's a one owner no two owners so i wonder what he bought it with there's owner one he bought it with six, i don't have six, a mileage I, I hope this um, for yeah. ski for ski bum didn't figure it'd go at that price. Yeah, so yeah. big big swole, big swole hitting the gym. Big swole. Um, I, uh, ski bum, I think that's a great pickup. I think that's a ton of car for 170. I hope um, in in your case that the car is represented correctly because here you can see the car in the dealership before it had temp tags in some picture it had drilled front bumper yeah so i i, I just don't know uh with this car it looks like uh the seller has a bit of a collection with a 928 um an older an older like 80s carrera and he uh just moved on from his 99 um one maybe it was a little too fast for him maybe a little bit too fast he has a 996 cab in his wow. garage as well this uh 93 Land Rover Defender's got a lot of uh, a lot wow. of traffic. Yeah, that's a beautiful. Looks like car. Look at a lot of time for the 93. Looks yep. like people are moving over. So to this. people are moving over to the Defender. Um, uh, if only we could post a link. If only we can post a link. That's a 300 TDI Defender 130. Um, let's hop on into it. There's eight minutes to go. Um, I don't know too much about Defenders. I know the basics of them, but I must say, just from the get go. This is undoubtedly the most badass Defender I've ever seen. And the cleanest. The cleanest. I mean, the finish is, an, is immaculate. It looks like he's a front winch, snorkel, massive tire on his roof rack. Um, this is a 93 Defender 130 left-hand drive, which is really nice. And um, it looks like the seller uh, took delivery of it in Yugoslavia. Um, in 1994. Um, so then the truck was shipped to Gibraltar, acquired by 
Um, a guy in England, then sent to Spain, and then imported to the U.S. in late 2018. So with 128,000 miles, I would like to know, I'd be really just curious to know how many miles it has by transport um, between Yugoslavia, Gibraltar, uh, Spain, and Italy. Um, but this one looks to be pretty modded. Custom interior. Um, I'm sure in the U.S. Um, it had all these heat, these mods done. It has saw wheel tools, 31 inch mud tires. Um, it's a five speed manual, two two speed transfer case. Um, wasn't originally painted in black, so it was repainted. Um, Shit is boss. It's really really cool. I mean that interior is done really nicely. Um, stock Defender interior looks nothing like that. It's a two tone charcoal leatherette interior. It's got a light setup and a half. Really, really cool light setup. Wow. Um, Pick 42. Momo steering wheel. There's the five speed. Looks to be done up very, very nicely. And it has the 2.5 liter turbo diesel, which I mean, I think are absolutely rock solid. It's kind of what these defenders are known for. Uh, look at that pumpkin. That's a fat diff right there. Oh. Um, sure, it has locking differentials. 11 letter VIN, most VINs are 17, denotes the vehicle was not assembled at the factory, rather delivered in boxes as a knockdown kit. That's really, really funny. What? Um, that kind of reminds me of uh, a, a, a pretty recent Grand Tour episode with Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May, where they are sent care packages full of car parts and they essentially build a Defender that has a, a, a similar diesel engine. Uh, looks absolutely nothing like this. Um, this is pretty badass. I wouldn't mind cruising that thing. I think this would be with 37 inch mud tires, limited sound deadening, and a uh, 90s era diesel. I think it would be a bit of a rough drive. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of like something to look at, possibly something to go on adventures with. Um, bring that baby to Africa man I go on safaris right that. you could safari this thing um, registered right now in Florida looks like it has had extensive work I, one of my favorite features is these custom headlights keep going uh, pick 40 something and it shows all the lights yeah let's take a look it looks like everything's pretty much LED and done up someone invested some big dollars into this um, these aren't cheap to import and then tack on all of these mods on top of it this is one modded 93. We're having some loading errors here, folks. Looks like hell of a service records and, um, and documentation. Wow. Still at 7,500. We're at 7,500. We had four minutes to go. <laughs> ways of cruising volunteer said if you can afford this you can afford a garage to build it in yeah like everyone's there the, the consensus in the comments is um about highway driving guys are saying if you're buying this for the highway like you're, go home you're go home like yeah. um a lot of people saying a bucket list truck bucket, bucket list car um for me I'm more of a sports car guy, but I can totally appreciate a cool Defender. Um, I, my first car, actually, um, that I drove for four or five months was a um, Wrangler Unlimited on some big mud tires with a six-speed manual. It was the slowest truck I've ever driven, and I just remember just lusting after a sports car because... Unless you're off road, you. if unless you're off roading cars like that, it's all the rattles, the mud tires, um, the incredibly slow acceleration. It's it's just not for me, um, but I can totally appreciate it. I think I, I what I need to do is take a, a, a long off road trip, um, kind of like what Matt Fair did with his film crew. Um, but we're we're under three minutes to go. Uh, current bid for this 93 Defender 130 with the 2.5 liter turbo diesel engine is 70,500 bucks. Yeah. So it looks like we've got uh, two total viewers today. Um, we might be a little bit 
off schedule this week. Uh, we're trying to figure some stuff out on the back yeah. end. Um, well, I think last week uh, our, our shows had between 15 and 25 viewers, which we really liked. We got a lot of people in the comments. And um, whenever we'd post the link to the Bring a Trailer thread, it would kind of guarantee that we had at least uh, 8 to 12 members watching us. Um, but Bring a Trailer reached out to us, and although they showed a lot of positivity and enthusiasm, they said that uh, they'd prefer if we didn't post the link in their thread. And They said um, we aren't allowed to. And basically, they, they retracted our ability to post the link. Um, so in terms of uh, being able to um, grow an audience, it's going to be really tough for us. Um, we covered an M Coop last yep. week, and the owner of the M Coop was super gracious, and he reached out to us and said that um, we should reach out to sellers uh, via the contact us um, button right here, in a contact seller button in every bring a trailer listing, and say, hey, um, we really really like your vehicle. Um, we'd love to compliment. Um, it by 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 finishing off the auction with a live stream. Yeah, with a live um, stream commentary about the bids, going through the gallery. You know the same thing we've been doing the last twenty five cars or so that we've gone through. Yep. Um, and I think if we contact the seller and they would love to have that, um, and the seller would like to post the link, I don't see bring a trailer being right. able to Re say refute that. Refute that. I mean, yeah. as a seller, you pay a hundred bucks uh, just to list the car. Yeah. So that's just another form of, um, I don't know, interaction with potential bidders. Yeah, and we're not trying to take away, uh, tr we're not trying to, um, you know, compete for traffic to bring a trailer. We think our live stream is something that complements it. You could have it in another window. You can um, minimize the size of both windows. So you have the auction on one side and our live stream on another. We just think that adding some, some voice to these auctions um, is a great way to view them and it's something that we wish we had but yep. we have less than 20 seconds to go on this 1993 Land Rover Defender 130 this is auction house live um, if you just tuned in we'd appreciate any comments uh, from the three viewers in in our in our chat uh, we'd love to hear hello from you. hello yeah <laughs> kind of quiet in there yeah we're day. talking to ourselves today but yeah we'd appreciate any comments at all looks um, like we're ending looks at like we're ending at 7500 yep. and we sold it to Mark Lowe um, not too familiar with the Land Rover Defender market. Like Kyle and I said previously, we're sports car guys through and through. Yep. Um, but we can appreciate something that's as clean and well built. And this car really has a story. It's it's been around the world and back, and it's really cool to own um, a, a car that that's had so many lives, um, and a car that's as versatile and res and reliable and sought after as a Defender. Um. I think seventy thousand five hundred is probably a very fair price for this car, considering how yep. much work um, looks like has been put into it. Full custom interior, repaint, light pods, um, custom lights, custom winch, roof racks, thirty-seven inch mud tires, um, done-up wheels. Um, yeah, I think the seller did really well. So this is the third auction we covered today. Um, we might hop into one or two more before closing out. Um, if you're just tuning in, uh, we're at a bit of a standstill here on Auction House Live because uh, Bring a Trailer refuted our ability to post our link in the comment section. So we're just working through that right now. It's not deterring us, um, but we're just kind of working through it. Right now we have an E39 540i six speed ending in three minutes. Let's hop into that. Uh, E39's 540i's were never really popular until the E39 M5 started really appreciating. Now these are kind of following the trends and um, really great examples are fetching high dollars. This one has three minutes to go. It's finished in sienna red metallic over a sand leather. Um, really cool spec with the dark, almost Bordeaux style red over a tan interior. Looks really sharp, 75,000 miles, six speed manual, the 4.4 liter V8, um, these V8s sound really, really great. Classic um, BMW 17 inch alloys look <coughs> really, really nice. The BZ had one of these, yeah? Yeah, we had a friend who had a 540i, a little mini 39. His wasn't manual, but he actually straight piped it. And I 
I remember it sound it being loud, but it being super almost sounding like LS, like a like a Chevy engine, like an, an like an LS, um, and it sounded good. Yeah, yeah. These are these are really cool. It looks like it has the M Sport wheel. Um, a lot of guys uh, love the 540i. That's clean. Yeah, and it has a, a ton of recent service valve cover gaskets, oil pan gasket, which is huge. Look at that. We've um, got spark plug, timing chain temperature, serpentine, ton of maintenance. It's got 280 horsepower out of 4.4 liters and eight cylinders. Yeah, it's kind of incredible um, how far displacement versus power has come. Uh, but we're less than two minutes out. Did you see, well? Did you see the uh, BMW four cylinder, the six hundred horsepower? Yeah. What is that going in? That's going. It's it's an M engine. I didn't see. It, I couldn't really. Yeah. So BMW just la launched a four cylinder, producing around six hundred horsepower. I think it's kind of a development engine right now. But I could see that going into like an M two or or yeah. This or they similar. said it, it was branded like as an M. Yeah. Division. May, maybe they're launching a Z four M. That'd be um, sick. Seller just announced the car will be sold, so I take that as the reserve has been met. Uh, we just had a bid by John Frederick come in for fourteen to fifty. Yep. Um, AMG Love says this is one of the best non MBMWs. Um, I really enjoy the spec. I love these seventeen inch M wheels. Um, an advantage of having the E thirty nine five forty is that there's a lot of parts transfer between the E thirty nine M five and these guys. So if you want to upgrade. You know, control arm, suspension components, exhaust, wow. rear, front and rear fascia, um, you can. Looks like this car is out of Illinois and that this guy is a through and through uh, BMW enthusiast. It looks like he has uh, two E46s right there. Props to him for the uh, photos if you go back. with He shows like any of the seals that are bad. Um, he's got 280 photos in this gallery. So yeah. look at that. Like, yeah. That... That is what gives people confidence to be able to buy a car sight unseen. Right. Yep. Very, very true. Wow. Let's check the underbody. Is this car out of Illinois? Yeah. Excuse the fast scrolling. Yep. This is Lake Zurich, Illinois. Um, look at that shifter. Really, really clean M, M, M wow. shifter. I really like that. Um, I typically am not a fan of uh, tan interiors, but um, 15K. with this darker red um over the tan i think it's really really sharp looks like this is from the the recent servicing the timing chain tensioners valve cover gaskets yeah. he's got the valve covers off in this photo the intake taken apart wow it, what was that motor out go back that's the oil pan gasket oh, yeah, oil pan gasket was done you said right <clears throat> underbody is exceptionally clean Sheesh. um almost looks like these control arms might have been repainted or galvanized uh, given that it's an Illinois car, but I don't want to make any assumptions here. 75,000 miles. Super clean. All necessary maintenance has been done. Looks like it was recently aligned. If you're looking for a 540 in this spec, um, that is not like a, a, a collector's car, but something that you could daily or drive because uh, you really, really like and want a manual E39, I think this is a really good option for you. We're at 15.5 with less than a minute to go. Only takes two. We've got uh, SPR TRB89 and Frederick, John Frederick. Johnny Boy Frederick, car will be sold. It's hit reserve. T minus five minutes. That's right, Griffin, 50.56. S2K Chris, as this is heating up, I would say it is. We have less than a minute to go. We're sitting at 15.5. If you're watching and bidding on this, which you probably are not, uh, I would advise uh, to, you know, put your bid in at around 20, 15 to 20 seconds. Don't wait for it to uh, the clock to go all the yeah. way down. We've had, uh, we've sold a bunch of cars on Bring a Trailer and we find that their servers can be, can act up a little bit. So you just want to be careful if you really want a car. Um, but yeah, I'm very impressed by this gallery. Um, super, super thorough. Looks like we have exterior and interior driving videos. We didn't get a chance to watch that, um, but really impressed by this E39. I, I would love to drive one. Oh, yeah. I wonder. I just want to know what the power feels like from yep. big V8 like that. Ooh. 15750 on the CMO <coughs> Metallic. Um, really clean car. I think um, um, a common mod on these is so, to... Um, 
switch out the front and rear bumpers for the M5s, um, which I think is kind of cool. Um, a lot of guys do gloss black grills. I really appreciate the 17 inch uh, M wheels. Yeah, I, I, like th I think wheels. it's really, really period. I think anything aftermarket would look out of place on a car that's as classic as this. Um, I'd probably leave this beauty stock, honestly. Yeah, totally. Maybe um, a cat back exhaust if you want to hear the fi the four point four liter a little Save bit more. Save the stock one and yeah, totally. Just just mo just bolt ons that you can yeah, switch on and off. Exactly. Um, tick under seventy five thousand. I mean, this seller is so thorough um, with these German cars. It, it doesn't really. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of their dashes act up and, and pixelate. And you know, as 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 a seller of a, of an E fifty five, we didn't take care of that because it wasn't a big deal. But this seller went the extra mile, took his entire cluster out. Probably paid five five hundred bucks. Yeah, oh, big time. So sent, receipts in the gallery. So. Sent it to California and had had the pixel repair <coughs> done. Um, three sets of keys. <clears throat> um, we're talking about a three owner vehicle he acquired it in 2019 um that might be um, oh he incredible. uh he only paid 130 for that pixel repair wow that's, that's surprising wow he's right so we have S P R T R B 89 got the wheels refinished with the highest bid at 16,000 bucks very exciting auction. Yes, S2K, Chris. I hope you have an S2K, buddy. John Frederick really wants this car. Putting in another $250 bid. Bringing the high bid to $16,250. Just te checking out S2K, Chris, right here. Um, he comment He's a new member of, of, of Fe as of February. He commented on this M3 six-speed, which we are following as well. And we'll be commenting on uh, later this week saying this is my unicorn i have to agree with you uh there s2k chris what was that m3 at? the z this is the uh, zcp which is competition package six speed m3 sedan so it's an e90 not an e92 and this is finished Those, yeah. in a super rare red with a six speed um i forgot the mileage but i think it's pretty low and it's very much a unicorn um <coughs> So we have less than about a minute to go. We're sitting at 16,250 on this 2000 BMW 540i6 speed. Auction house live is a little quiet today. A little quiet today for the three watching. It would uh, really help us out if you hopped into the chat and just, uh, you know, said a little something to us. Well, once we're once we work it out, we bring a trailer. Or yeah. We go around, bring a trailer, and we go right to the sellers. Like we'll yeah. we'll be fully back at yeah. it. Yeah. Go and get we our really, audience we, here. We take our own time. Uh, try to set aside between an hour to two hours a day. Sometimes when we're feeling generous, up to three hours a day to comment on auctions. Uh, so we try to get all our work done in the morning, um, in order to do so. But we really, really enjoy this. Um, I'm not sure where our um, elevated off road. Yeah, our, our guys boy, are yeah, racer boys. boy ele elevated off road. They're, um, they're honestly probably watching the uh, end of some of these auctions, and yeah, I just can't man. post the link. So yeah, um, but we really appreciate sixteen two fifty sold. Sold for sixteen two fifty. Pretty really, fair really price. Clean. I'd say fair on both. E thirty nine and five. Um, we're at four thirty six p.m. And we're going to finish it out with this E60 M5. This is going to be our last car for the day. Um, E60 M5, a bit of a handful in terms of maintenance. I, yeah, I think I'd pass, honestly, on that one. Yeah. I've um, never driven one. When though, you so. have them right, I, 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 from what I've heard, I haven't driven one. When these are really, really great... Um, Mechanically, there's nothing better. Um, for those of you who don't know, BMW developed this V10 to go into an F1 car. And when they found out that um, <coughs> we just had a big jump from, what? from 26 all the way up to 29. That could be the auction then right there. Uh, yeah, we went from 26.9 up to uh, 29,000. But like I was saying, BMW developed this V10 um, for, for Formula One. And it never made its way into Formula One. So... In order to alleviate the sunk cost they had from all the R and D, 
they threw it in, in their M5, and there will never be another car like that. That's what is so attractive about these E60 M5s. To me, this is the last car that will ever have a v sedan that will have a V10 in it, uh, given modern day trends. And it's a five liter. Um, Only they lasted a little long. Like, yeah, you know. I think if 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 money is no object, you can maintain them well. Um, but this, the, the, uh, but for 25 grand, you could get something right, that right, might save. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this one has 500 horsepower, 384 pound feet of torque has Iceman exhaust, which is crazy. X pipe center section. I bet this thing sounds like a Zonda. Um, it has the seven speed SMG. So I'm really surprised that we're sitting at, 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 at 30 grand with the SMG granted. It only has 26,000 miles. Not a huge fan of the aftermarket wheels. Um, not surprised this is an East Coast car. I can kind of see an East <coughs> Coast kind of guy um, driving this car. Um, Stratford, Connecticut. Stratford, Connecticut. Vossen wheels. Really hey, buddy, not, you watch the socks. Really not a Vossen wheels guy here. You can see that aftermarket Eisman exhaust. Um, H&R lowering springs. I hope that um, for the buyer's sake, the seller has retained all the factory parts um it has expel front front protection film um really uh this is my favorite trim for the e60 m5 the uh the brushed aluminum i think it looks really sharp i'm not sure kyle and i always talk about hump versus no hump uh, for those who don't know the early iDrive systems you have this hump here in the middle of the dash for the M3, specifically the E90, and also the 1M, you could get spec it without the hump. I'm not sure if that was an option for the M5. I didn't know these had heads up. Uh, heads up display. No six. Yeah, and also another thing about these cars is you can adjust the power level. So say your wife or your son or your daughter is driving. How do you do that? Um, is that the you, button? Uh, you could go within the iDrive. I think that's why these um, always <coughs> came with the iDrive system where you could get them with, you couldn't get them without without it. Uh, but you go in there, and I think you could adjust it to 300 horsepower, 400 horsepower, and then max integrated V1. That's cool in the mirror. I haven't seen that before. No, I haven't seen that as well. I might give one of these videos a quick play on my screen. Yeah. So it sounds like a Lamborghini Gallardo or a Zonda. Whew. Um, these are a little crazy. Yeah. So it sounds like a Lamborghini. <clears throat> um, sorry about that audio there, but um, so major issues with these are rod bearings, of course. Um, the SMG transmission needs a lot of servicing. That's why the six speeds uh, bring with them a huge premium. Uh, Vanos, the variable valve timing uh, is an issue with these cars. Um, I think suspension is pretty <coughs> straightforward, but it, it's mainly powertrain issues. Um, um, with these M5s. I don't know if I agree with the end of that comment. You can daily drive them. I mean, you can You can daily drive any car. Yeah, you can daily drive. I think it's just all about finding one that's been maintained. If you could get into one of these and rod bearings have been done or they're low enough miles, and for me, it would have to be a six-speed. I couldn't do the SMG. No. Um, I think a, these cars have taken a bit of a hit recently, although the top bid um, would say otherwise, but... Two of the biggest influencers in the uh, social media world um, that deal with cars, Doug DeMiro and Tyler Hoovy of Hoovy's Garage. Um, Tyler Hoovy actually bought one of these and Doug DeMiro did a video on one and they both kind of... Um, Hoovy's getting the hell out of his. Yeah, Hoovy <laughs> sold his, but they both the consensus of both of their pieces on this car was that um, they're insane. Uh, there will never be another super sedan like this with a 5 liter naturally aspirated V10 or a V10 at all for that matter. Um, but these cars are can can be incredibly unreliable. Uh, just put, a, you know, hit the wallet very, <coughs> very hard. Um, so, oh, somebody but did. But they uh, are gorgeous. And yeah, EAG does have a... E60. Yep. E EAG. Um, 24,000 miles. Doesn't say price. Enthusiast Auto Group uh, just got in a 09 E60. Um, it looks like it's finished in a dark Lama blue. Interlagos. Interlagos blue um, with a six-speed. This one is a original owner, which is really, really nice, out of Connecticut. Um, E60 M5 with the SMG. Um, really cool that it's the original owner. 
Um, I have a hard time seeing this uh, $29,000 bid be be contested. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Being the original owner, unless he uh, donated or gave all the uh, parts to the shop that did the work, I would say that it's pretty pretty likely that he has uh, the original parts. This is sitting on Voss and Wheels, not my favorite. H&R lowering springs right here. You can see the Vorsteiner um, bumper extensions. These are done in carbon fiber, I believe. Looks like he has a full Valentine 1 radar setup right here. You can see a laser jammer on the front grill. Um, I really like that the front bumper hasn't been drilled. Uh, these side vents have been uh, redone <coughs> in gloss black. Um, continuing through, uh, we have tints on all windows except for the windshield. Including tail uh, Tail lights have been tinted. You can see there the tips of the Eisman exhaust. Um, it's been debadged in the back, which is cool. <coughs> this car has New Jersey registration despite being located in Connecticut. Um, there you can see he did the gloss black kidney grills. Looks pretty um, good. Yeah, it looked pretty good. You could see there, super subtle. That's the laser jammer setup. <coughs> yep. Um, kind of there showing the stance of the wheels. Like I said, not the biggest fan of the uh, the Vossens there. I think they, they might be a cast wheel, but um, don't hold me to that. I'd just rather just the classic E60 wheels. Interior seems to, to be in very, very good condition. Um, black leather with brushed aluminum He's got trim. mats in there too, so I'm sure carpet. Yep, carpets are protected. It looks like he has uh, the BMW mats. Um, carbon fiber inlay on the wheel, um, which is kind of cool. You can see the paddles there are done in brushed aluminum as well. Um, this has the SMG transmission, which can be a bit of a handful. There's the classic BMW iDrive um, wheel. Um, looks like you have M dynamic button. Another toggle switches on the steering wheel. Yep, there's your M button right there. For those unfamiliar, you, you hit that and it sets transmission, powertrain, exhaust, steering, suspension, all to um, the most the sportiest setting, essentially. Uh, there you can see you park these cars in neutral, um, much like a manual transmission, and pull the handbrake. Tick under 27,000 miles. Super, pretty, super clean. <coughs> pretty pretty impressive display. that uh, this guy's only driven this really impressive 27,000 miles and also super impressive that he bought it new um sold for, for 29k 29, are we yeah we should be yep all right um that, <coughs> was, kind of, that was kind of what we call a uh, knockout bid right there yes um typically sir. we'll see you know 250 dollars increments going up but this car was sold to refuse name for twenty nine thousand dollars. Looks like he lost the E fifty five by two hundred fifty bucks. Wow. Yeah. So we're huge E fifty five guys here, especially the W two tens. Yep. And uh, yeah, that one sold for twenty nine two fifty. Yeah. Wow. So he was close on that, but he got his his German super sedan out of it. E sixty M five is a lot faster than that E fifty five. That's for sure. Um, I think this is a comment about EAG. Yep, yep. 09 with, with 24. Um, EAG, uh, for those of you who don't know, is Enthusiast Auto Group. They're based out of Ohio. Um, they tend to be M specialists. Uh, there's mixed reviews on them for jacking up prices on their, on their inventory. Um, but they do have some of the cleanest M vehicles in the nation, and they're specialists in it. They can... Um, basically curate the best inventory of M cars and diagnose them and maintain them better than anybody because that's all what they do. Um, but we are um, done for today. This concludes our 429 stream. Uh, we covered about five or six vehicles on this stream, a little bit short. <coughs> really wish uh, the, the three watching um, would have chimed in a little bit more, but Regardless, uh, we've taken a bit of a hit here on Auction House Live. It's not deterring yeah. us. Um, it's it's kind of giving us the, uh, the, the fire to come back even stronger and figure ways around this. But we think uh, moving forward, what we're going to do tonight is reach out to a lot of sellers whose auctions are closing uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, throughout the rest of the week and basically yep. say, hey, listen, uh, you could check out our channel. We've done this about four or five times, but we comment on... Uh, the closing of, of auctions on Bring a Trailer. We like to provide some some voice to to the end of the auction. 
we're unbiased. Um, we typically say positive things. We don't like yep. to, uh, you know, say, we don't like to detract from right. the positives in the auction. But at the same time, it's like they're if there's a negative or if there's right. a, a drawback, we're going to mention that. Right, because right. We keep it honest. We keep yep. it real. And um, we'll be back uh, tomorrow, if not tomorrow, <coughs> then Wednesday. Um, once we kind of figure this out, we have a couple emails to send to bring a trailer, uh, a couple emails to send to um, to the owners. And like we said, we're a compliment to bring a trailer. We're not trying yep. to... Uh, you know, poach their viewers, not take a, take away from their site time. Right, and... we're we're not trying to detract from any of that. We're just trying to complement the service, and we think providing a live voiceover stream is a really good way of doing so. Um, so let's just refresh the results and and just give an overview of what we covered today. Uh, just a couple of cars here. So we started with the AK Mile AP2S2000, moved on to the 991.2 Turbo S. Uh, looked at the 93 Land Rover Defender 130 for a little bit, then went to the 540i and E60 M5. So we packed in a lot of cars into a short amount of time. <coughs> and um, yeah, we're really excited for the future of Auction House Live. Um, this isn't going to be the end of us. Um, if we're completely banned from Bring a Trailer, um, we're going to figure out something here. Um, but we really appreciate uh, the three of you that tuned in. Uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. Um, we're going to be doing this about about three times a week. And uh, you'll hear from us soon. So we really appreciate you guys watching. And we'll see you either tomorrow or Wednesday. Train man's out. <laughs>